everything in here with the exception of one or two things I built myself the furnaces the the, the glory hole the uh, this stuff you see around me was mostly made by myself to, to do this activity I'm always a little leery of people who declare themselves as artists. I think sometimes that depends on what you've accomplished and someone after you're done and gone says the person was important or that person was an artist, that kind of thing. Why can't we drop the art pretense and just call it our work and you do your work and you're judged on how good your work is, right? I'm a little uncomfortable telling people I'm an artist because I don't know if I match up always with what that ought to be in my head. Uh, this is a performance art. It's, uh, it's a little unlike something like, say, uh, making things out of wood or ceramics or something like that. It's based on your skills applied in a short period of time. It's like maybe singing a song or playing a piece on the piano or something like that. You can't go back and do it again. It either works or it doesn't. You get it or you don't, and it depends on how well you did it. So you have to concentrate your mind. It's a little like, it's a sort of meditative at some level. You have to shut all that other junk in your head off and concentrate on that. And in that way, although it's an insanely difficult skill, it's calming when, you're, when you do it right. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm falling apart. I, I, my hand has now gotten s somewhat arthritic and they told me it's best to wear this thing. So the last couple months I've been trying to get used to doing it, uh, glass blowing with this on. And it, it seems to work okay, but uh, I believe my, the number of years I can keep going at this is, is starting to be limited. I got into it late in life, so, but I've had a pretty decent run. Oh, I've been a pessimist all my life, which is a realist. This knows that optimistic people are deluded. I try not to think about uh, it beyond tomorrow right now. I don't, uh, it, it kind of terrifies me. I had a friend who, uh, I, I, and I'd known him since we'd known each other for a long, long time when I transitioned, and it, bo it really bothered him. We were down in the shop, he said, do you still like doing this stuff? I said, that, why would I be standing here if I didn't? He need, a few lines, he says, you're still you. I said, yeah, I yeah. am. I dress differently. I speak a little differently. And, uh, but yeah, it's, I'm the person you knew. Phil was a big guy with a motorcycle and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, had get, get, I had friends who figured I was more male than they were because I would drink a bottle of bourbon and carry him home and put him to bed, right? But it never felt right, but I could do it just wasn't working anymore. And I had spent a couple months kind of sitting in here staring at the wall before they talked me into going to see a psychologist finally, which is another thing Phil had vowed he would never do in his life is talk to somebody. But at some point, whatever this is, you don't talk about it. You do what you got to do to keep going and they bury you with this. But it'll, it comes back and gets you. The way I've explained it to some people is like this when they say, well, you know, weren't you, you weren't yourself? And I say, well, no, I wasn't because the person most people saw was a construct, something I had that uh, said, this is how I need to act to be able to get along and adapted certain attitudes and things like that. And part of it was just getting people to leave me alone. And I was good at it. It was pretty much what it was about, yeah. She did, did not have a, uh, that, that put the end on it, yeah. 
that she did not seem to want to uh, put any effort into trying. I, I did not want it to end. I wanted to try and figure things out, but it had gotten to the point where I had to do something or otherwise I, I would not be here. Uh, I very nearly did leave. But she at some point made up her mind that uh, she just was going to go and uh, she did. to the garage with a shotgun once, intending not to come back. The thing that changed my mind at that point mostly was that uh, uh, I'm, I'm a picky individual and like things done right, and the, uh, the gun hadn't been fired in 10 years, the, mech the trigger was sticky, I wasn't sure it was going to function right and I knew it had to do what it had to do the first time, so I ended up thinking, we better oil this and come back to it, and took the gun apart, put it away, and came back out of the garage. I was, it was like being in a dream watching yourself do this. My psychologist said it's a dissociative state. You, you're, something else was in charge, essentially. But I was probably that unhappy, and uh, I, decided that having gone through that, that you need to either finish it or make some changes in your life. I started to make some of the changes I had to make. I never had any regrets about doing it, I can say. You don't feel like you're a different person suddenly or something like that, except for the thing that the thing that's in your head that you've been living with slowly goes away. They do think about the time coming that I will have not be able to do it and I don't know what I'll, I'll be able to do. I put so much into this and I, I don't have an idea beyond this at the moment and that bothers me. Original, original plan was by about this time in life I'd be getting out of it. But figured we could sell the sell the operation in the building and put it in the retirement account. But there's only me, and it's got to keep going, I guess. and called me up a couple weeks later and said, can you pose, do you mind posing in that dress for me for this book cover project I have? And I said, sure, come on out, because it's an opportunity to do something strange and I, I, I liked putting on the clothes. So, and I didn't have any opportunities to do that. So the name of the book was Alias Mrs. Doubtfire. It was being published in England. It was the first edition and he had to take a picture of me sitting in a chair. We have my legs. Are, I have the painting around here somewhere. And uh, with the legs crossed, I have a cigar in my mouth. And when the, the book was published, I was the model for the painting that's on the cover of that. So uh, subsequently, the book had many other covers. And eventually, Robin Williams became the main image on the cover of the book. And it became renamed as Mrs. Doubtfire. But it's the same book. And uh, I was on the cover, and I'm still around, and I have better legs than Robin William ever had. 